All right, so we're diving deep today into something that I think a lot of you are really going to be into. Yeah, this is a good one. It's journaling for manifestation. A big one. It is a big one. Lots of buzz around it. Yeah, manifestation is one of those things that, you know, people kind of get a little, I don't know, like maybe a little weird about it, you know? Woo. Yeah, woo woo. A little bit. But we're going to try to break it down, look at the sources we have, and uh, make it, you know, practical. Exactly. I think yeah. there's there's real value here. Yes. Uh, if you approach it the right way. And that's what we're here for. That's it. Yeah, so we have some really fascinating sources all about how to use journaling to manifest your desires and overcome any of those roadblocks that might be holding you back. Yeah, and and what I found really interesting in the material is it's not just about, you know, sitting there and visualizing and hoping for the best. Right. It's really about combining that visualization with concrete action steps. I like that. Which is huge. Actionable. Very actionable. Yes. Okay. So the source we're looking at today lays out this really cool three-step journaling process for manifestation. And I think it's a really good place to start. Yeah. Great framework. So step one is all about figuring out how you want to feel, which I think is really important. Huge. Because I think a lot of times when we think about manifestation, we get caught up in visualizing very specific things. Material things, especially. Material things, yeah. Like, I want this house, or I want this car, or I want, you know, whatever it is. But this is different. Yeah, you're getting at the core feeling, which yeah. is much more powerful, I think. It is. It's about tapping into the core emotion. So, like, instead of visualizing yourself driving a specific car, think about the feeling of freedom and independence that comes with it. Right. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, so step two is where things get really interesting. You're going to describe your ideal day in vivid detail. Oh, yeah, get specific. Like, I'm talking, paint that picture in your journal. Like, what time do you wake up? How do you feel when you wake up? What are you eating? What are you doing? Who are you interacting with? You know, like, really, really... And the reason that's so powerful is... Right. Well, it's almost like a mental rehearsal. Interesting. Right. So, you know, neuroscience tells us right. that when you repeatedly visualize something, you're essentially strengthening neural pathways in your brain Okay. associated with that experience. I got it. So it's like you're training your mind to believe it's possible. I like it. To believe that it's already happening. It's already reality. Exactly. Okay. That's super cool. All right. So we've tapped into our desired feelings. We've envisioned our ideal day. Yep. Now, how do we bridge the gap between that vision and reality? That's the question. That's the million dollar question. It is. Well, that's where step three comes in. Yeah. Small steps, big dreams. Love it. So this is where we move from the mental to the physical. Exactly. Taking action. It's an action. Putting it into practice. Yeah. So it's about identifying those small little bite-sized actions that you can take today to move you closer to that big picture. It's like it's like setting smart goals. Oh yeah. You know, breaking down those larger aspirations into manageable steps that you can actually take. Makes total sense. I love that. So consistency is obviously huge, especially when we're talking about something like journaling for manifestation. So in your opinion, how does that consistency really play into this? It's key, mm -hmm. you know, like anything yeah. if you want to see results, you've got to be consistent with it. So, you know, I, I would say Think about creating some kind of ritual around your journaling practice. Okay. Maybe it's the first thing you do in the morning, you know, when you're having your coffee or your tea. Yeah. Or maybe it's the last thing you do at night before you go to bed. Find what works for you. Find your thing. Find your thing. Exactly. Let's get to it. Exactly. Okay. So I love how, you know, this whole approach, it's not about, you know, having it all figured out from the start. But absolutely not. It's about the process. It's about exploration. Yeah. Being open to the journey. And allowing that path to unfold. I love that. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. So before we wrap up, I wanted to see if you had any final thoughts for our listeners. Yeah. I would say as you're embarking on this journey of journaling for manifestation, just think about this for a second. Yeah. What if the feeling that you're yearning for, that sense of accomplishment or joy or abundance or whatever it is you're trying to manifest? Yeah. What if it's already present in your life mm. in some way, shape, or form? I like that. Right? Even in small ways, it might be there. So how can you magnify that feeling today? Mm. How can you use your journaling to not just manifest new things, but also to recognize and appreciate the blessings that you already have? That is an amazing point to end on. I love that. It's all about perspective. 
It is all about perspective. All right. Well, that's our deep dive for today. That's <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Absolutely. Bye.